Time for another laptop showdown. Today we're going to take a look at the Dell XPS 15 versus the HP Spectre X360. Which one's best for you? Stay tuned. So we've had a lot of requests to do this video and it's really interesting because these are two very different laptops. I understand they're both 15 inch, but they're very different in terms of design and functionality. The XPS 15 is hands down one of the most powerful laptops on the market today that's not a strict gaming machine. The X360 on the other hand is much more flexible. It's a two-in-one, it's a tablet, it has a pen. These are very different scenarios. So you first have to ask yourself, how are you going to use this device? Now it'll help guide you. All right, let's talk a little bit about design and build quality. The XPS 15 is sort of a hybrid device. It's metal on the inside, and on the inside it's carbon fiber with soft touch paint. And it feels really nice. It does have a metal plate that comes off at the bottom, and overall it's a really solid design. Of course, being a traditional laptop, the display only goes back so far, so it doesn't lay down flat or do anything unique. That's even with the touchscreen version. When it comes to the HP Spectre, on the other hand, this is a solid metal device, unibody design. It's easily one of the most handsome laptops I've ever used. And it feels very solid, and both of them are actually very good quality, but it's going to feel very different. The HP feels more like a quality Mac to me, where the XPS 15 is sort of its own unique design. One thing I want to get out of the way is the processor. It's one of the biggest differences between these two devices. On the XPS 15, you're dealing with a Core i7-7700HQ. That's a quad-core Kaby Lake. On the other hand, the HP Spectre has a Core i7-7500U processor. It's only dual-core. I tell you, it makes a big difference in benchmarks. Now, if you're running just Windows 10 applications, you're not going to really notice a difference. But between gaming, video output, the Dell XPS 15 is on a whole different level. All right, now related to those CPU differences is, of course, the GPU. The Dell XPS 15 features an NVIDIA GTX 1050 with 4 gigabytes of video memory. The HP, on the other hand, has a GT 940MX GPU with 2 gigabytes of video memory. This is night and day difference between these two things. The 1050 is going to be a very powerful GPU. It's good for video output. It's good for light video gaming. The 940MX, on the other hand, is more of a boost for those 4K graphics on the HP. It's nice to have, but you're not going to get a lot of performance out of it. And in fact, the 1050 will absolutely trounce it when it comes to benchmarks. Now, it's important to remember, neither one of these are gaming machines, but if you are going to do some light gaming, you're going to want that GTX 1050 on the XPS 15. It makes a big difference. Now, when it comes to displays, both of these devices offer 4K glossy touchscreen options. However, Dell offers a full HD matte non-touch one as well, which is what I prefer. It's just easier on the eyes and it gets better battery life. On the other hand, HP does have a non-pentile display and it looks really, really good. It's more natural, it's true 4K. Now, the other advantage here with HP is, of course, you can use the pen with it. On Dell, even with the touchscreen, there is no pen support. So you really need to ask yourself if you're going to use a pen on the device. If you are, well, the HP is really your only option here. Dell, on the other hand, well, it probably has the best 4K display on the market. If that's your thing and you're into video editing, it's probably going to be your best choice. What about when it comes to bezels? Of course, Dell uses the Infinity Edge, which just looks amazing. On the sides and top, it basically has no bezel whatsoever. The downside of that, of course, is the web camera needs to go at the bottom. Now, if you don't ever use a web camera, not a big deal. If, however, you are making a lot of Skype calls, it's going to be a big negative. Looking at the HP, you have very thin bezels on the side, but at the top, there's still quite a bit of bezel. But that's kind of okay. They put a really good video camera at the top there that's wide angle. You also have a Windows Hello camera with IR that works very well. So there's a trade-off there, and it works for HP. On the other hand, Dell, because it has very thin bezels, has a smaller footprint for the device overall. Let's talk about one of my favorite topics, keyboards. A Dell XPS 15 has a pretty solid keyboard. It's 1.3 millimeters of travel. Now, if you saw my review, I didn't have much to say about it. It works. It works well. It's not my favorite keyboard, but I don't hate it either. It just kind of works. On the other hand, HP, they make one of the best keyboards available. If typing is your thing, you got to really appreciate what they've done with the Spectre. It's 1.5 millimeters of travel, and it doesn't bottom out nearly as bad. Also, the responsiveness is just very even between all the keys. I like the backlighting. There's just nothing I don't like about this keyboard. I highly recommend it. I kind of wish Dell could make this keyboard for the XPS 15, but they don't. So I got to give the win here to HP.
Let's talk about trackpads. Dell uses, of course, a precision touchpad with Microsoft's drivers, and it works very well. It's probably one of the best trackpads out there besides Surface Book. HP, on the other hand, has a very wide trackpad, and it looks cool, and it, the hardware is one of the best out there, but they do not use precision. They use synaptics instead. Now, it's not a bad trackpad at all. I just prefer precision. If I had to choose between these, Dell is going to win. When it comes to audio, both devices have dual speakers. Now, Dell puts them at the edge of the device here. They're not quite bottom firing, but they're definitely not top firing either. They work pretty well, but if you are typing, your hands kind of do block them a little bit, so you're going to get a little bit of muffling. Now, looking at the X360, HP rightly, in my opinion, puts the speakers at top on the side of the keyboard. I love this design. It's one of the best out there. I wish everybody did this. However, the speakers are a little bit more tinny sounding, and they don't quite have as much bass or richness when compared to the XPS 15. All right, let's talk about ports. Now, on the XPS 15, you do have a USB Type A on the side here, full HDMI, but it's only 1.4. You do have a USB Type C with Thunderbolt, which is really good, except it's only two PCI lanes, so there is some restrictions there. You also, of course, have your headphone port. Coming around to the other side, you have a full SD card slot. However, if you put the SD card in there, half of it will stick out. You also have a USB type A, so that's number two. You have a battery meter, and you also have a Kensington lock. Okay, HP does things a little bit differently. You have, of course, a USB type A, headphone jack, your power button, and of course, the grill. You do also have a full SD card slot. However, you can actually stick the whole card in there. Coming around to the other side, you have two USB Type-C devices, and that's a key difference here. You have two USB Type-C's and one A, whereas the Dell, you only have one Type-C and two A's. You also have a full HDMI port, but this is HDMI 2.0, which is real important if you're going to run a 4K display at 60 frames per second. You have the other grill, and of course, volume control, since this can also be used as a tablet. I should also mention that the Thunderbolt 3 port here is a little bit more powerful than a Dell XPS 15 since it has four PCI lanes instead of two. When it comes to configuration options, Dell gives you, of course, a lot more choice, but you do need to go through their website. I should mention the XPS 15 can go to 32 gigs of RAM, which is really impressive for developers who also need to use virtual machines. The HP Spectre can only do 16 gigs of RAM through its configuration, so it's a little bit more limiting. But then again, for your average consumer, 16 gigs of RAM is totally enough. When it comes to storage, the XPS 15 allows you to get up to one terabyte SSD, whereas HP only allows you up to 500 gigabytes. It's sort of a big difference, but then again, not everybody can afford or needs one terabyte SSD, so keep that in mind. So what about Windows Hello and Bio Authentication? Well, luckily both of these devices support it, but in different ways. HP uses an IR camera for facial recognition, where Dell has an optional fingerprint reader for an extra $25. Both of them are very good. The facial recognition, though, will fail sometimes in different lighting, so you'll need to tune it up occasionally. The fingerprint reader on the XPS 15 is very nice, but I think Dell could do a little bit better job in terms of design, but functionally it works very well and I have no issues with it. It's a no-brainer for $25. What about battery life? This is one of the most important factors on any laptop, and it's a little hard to compare here because it depends on the screen type. Now, if you're going to use 4K on both of these, actually your battery life is very similar. And that's really impressive because Dell has a much more powerful GPU and CPU, but they also have a larger battery. HP's battery is not nearly as big, but being an all-metal device, it weighs almost the same as the XPS 15. Now, if you put the Full HD display into the Dell XPS 15, which is what I use, you're going to get significantly more battery life. I put it around 9 to 10 hours, whereas you're looking at only between 6 and 7 hours with the 4K display on both of these devices. That's still really good, but if you really need the longevity, go for the Full HD version with the XPS 15. All right, let's bring it all home. What's the best laptop? Well, it really depends on your needs. The good news here is both of these are two of my favorite laptops for 2017 so far. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. It really depends on two things, your budget and what you need. For budget, I think the HP X360 is a little bit better. At $1499, you're getting a 4K display, 500 gigs of storage, and 16 gigs of RAM. That's really good value right there. The XPS 15, on the other hand, is a lot more powerful, but it's going to cost you a couple extra hundred dollars for it, so keep that in mind. Don't forget, the X360 is also a tablet and two-in-one with pen support. Now, if you don't need that, well, go for the XPS 15. If you'd like to explore that, though, you can't go wrong with the X360. So you have to really think about those two things. Unfortunately, you can't have it all, so you're going to have to choose. But 
No matter which one you get, you'll be happy with it. So that basically means it has no bezel whatsoever. Well, I can't say no, to, no bezel. So what about storage options? Option. So what about storage options? <laughs>